Hello, chemistry students. In this video, we are going to quantify work. To do that, I'm going to review some basic definitions and concepts in earlier videos. So the internal energy of a system is defined as the interconversion between heat and work within the system. So the change in the internal energy of a system depends on the amount of energy in the system at the beginning and an end. So basically, the internal energy of a system depends on its capacity to do work and the amount of thermal energy stored in it. That's the total internal energy. And that really, when we're looking at a system, it only looks at the beginning and the end of this internal energy. This is referred to as a state function. It's a mathematical function where it only looks at initial and final conditions and not how it got there. You can almost think of it as a delta V where you only care about your V final and your V initial. So if you are dispensing or delivering a certain volume, this would be kind of looked at as a state function because it doesn't really look at the process you use. It doesn't really care about the flow rate, how slow or how fast you went. It only cares about your initial and final conditions. Well, internal energy is the same thing. It only looks at final and initial conditions. So the change in internal energy within a system is energy of the final system minus energy of the initial system. Now, when we talk about systems in chemistry, what we're really referring to is the reaction. So when we talk about the internal energy of a reaction, the system, we're looking final minus initial. So we're looking at the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. So what is the energy exchange? Well, the amount of energy transformed depends on the molecular structure of the reactants because as they change their molecular structure to form products, that's gonna influence how the energy is transformed, whether it's going to lose heat or gain heat from the surroundings, whether it's gonna do work by expansion or work is gonna be done on it by it being compressed. So it depends, but the amount of energy depends on that molecular structure of the initial state, the reactants. But we can think of the system or our reaction interacting with its surroundings either through heat or work. So again, those were the different ways that we can transform energy, internal energy within a system. So delta E is really the heat plus the work that the system is doing. So energy exchanged between the system and surroundings is through heat and work. Now, we've already talked about thermal energy. Um, this was discussed in quantifying heat and doing the thermal energy transfer uh, reactions or, or calculations on that video. But basically, every system possesses thermal energy, uh, and that's because every system has atoms or molecules oscillating, and the transfer of heat from system to surroundings can be measured using a calorimeter. That's what those quantifying heat videos were for. So we've learned that we can measure thermal energy by using Q equals MCAT. M stands for mass, C stands for specific heat of that substance, and delta T for the change in temperature. And again, we can measure the change in temperature using a calorimeter. Now, the energy transfer is between the system and the surroundings. And that energy transfer, that heat transfer, is equal in magnitude. But we have a negative sign because even though it's equal in magnitude, it's opposite in direction. So if a hot, let's say a reaction is releasing heat to the surroundings, the amount of heat it releases is the same as the amount of heat that the surroundings is absorbing, just opposite direction. So if the reaction is losing heat, we would put a negative sign because that's considered an exothermic process, exo, exit, leaving, negative, you're losing that heat. But again, those are those other videos. This video 
discussing one type of internal energy is focused on work energy. And work energy is a little bit different. So recall that work equals force times distance, okay? So think of force as what an object feels when it's being pulled, pushed, or lifted. And based on the distance of it being pushed, like the man in the box of the video, or lifted or pull, that's work. And that work is a form of energy. It's the capacity, it requires energy to do work, to lift an object a certain distance. That work requires energy. So the internal energy of a system is equal to the thermal energy and the work energy. So we've already discussed in a reaction the thermal energy aspects. Now let's look how a reaction can do work energy. So typically in a chemical reaction, work is associated with physical and chemical changes within that reaction or that system. So what do I mean physical changes? Well, a common type of work is pressure volume work when a gas is produced and volume changes against an external pressure. And what I mean is at a constant pressure, that's an external atmospheric pressure. If gases are being produced, the gases have to expand. For the gases to expand and push back the atmosphere, that's work. It requires that system to do work. So think of combustion reactions, and we take advantage of this in a cylinder or a piston. So you burn fuel, and when you burn fuel, a combustion reaction, uh, gases are produced, and that is expanding and pushing on this piston that results in it causing motion of the vehicle. Now, how are we gonna calculate this in chemistry? Well, recall, work equals force times distance. We just finished the gas laws, and in the gas laws, we talked about pressure equals force times, or divided by area. And again, recall that I said you can think of it as the number of collisions on a unit area of like one inch by one inch squared pounds per square inch. So the number of collisions per square inch is pressure because the force are those collisions. Well, now we're going to do the same concept to help us calculate work. We're going to take pressure equals force divided by area, and we're going to solve for force. And we see that force is just pressure times area because I multiplied both sides by area. And now I can substitute this for force. And I get, well, work equals pressure times area times distance. Well, when I look at a cylinder, I have a base, okay? If I look at this cylinder, I have a base, and that base, right, it's a circle, pi r squared, that's its area. So if the gas is pushing on this base of the cylinder, this area, and it pushes it for a certain height, remember, volume equals for cylinder pi r squared, times the height, right? Area times the height. So the change in height is the distance, right? So now if I look at area times height, that's equal to volume. So with work, and when we talk about work within reactions, which are systems, we're typically looking at changes in volume on an external energy, or you can think of it as atmospheric pressure, which is typically constant during a reaction. So our concern is delta V, and we know delta V is V final minus V initial. So when gases expand, the delta V is positive because the final volume is greater than the initial volume, and we see that in that piston. However, the work is being done on the surroundings. So the system is losing that energy because when it's doing work on the surroundings, that takes energy out of the system. So it's doing work. And when it loses energy, work has to be negative. So for work to be negative, you can think of 
Well, work has to be negative. If I just want to solve for W, I'd put the negative on that side. And that's how we get this equation right here for work, for systems, really reactions when there is a change in volume. So work equals negative the external pressure, which is constant, and the change in volume within the system or the reaction. Now, we also learned in gas laws, and this is why we cover gas laws before the thermochemistry, that pressure and volume is usually measured in atmosphere per liters. But we've been discussing in terms of energy, what unit we use is joules. So we need what? A conversion factor. And we have one. There's 101.3 joules per one atmosphere liter. Now, can we apply this pressure volume work to an actual problem? Sure. So to inflate a balloon, you must do pressure volume work on the surroundings, right? Because the balloon has to expand. If you inflate a balloon from a volume of 0.1 to 1.85 liters, so this is my initial volume, this is my final volume, against a constant external pressure of what? One atmosphere. How much work is done and they want units of joules. So what do we do? Well, we're given initial and final volume and pressure. We know that work is negative, the pressure delta V. So now that we know the formula and we know we're looking for work, it's a question of first solving for the change in volume. So that's easy. Delta V, like any delta, if that was delta T, it'd be, T final minus T initial, but delta V is V final minus V initial, and we get 1.75 liters because we're following the rules of sig figs for addition and subtraction, and we only go to the hundredths place and not the thousandths place. So now that I have my delta V, I plug it in to negative P delta V, and I get a negative 1.75 liter atmospheres. But again, they want joules. Not a problem. We know the conversion factor method, and we can apply that one liter atmosphere equals 101.3 joules. So we start with the negative 1.75 liter atmospheres to cancel out the liter of atmosphere. We use a conversion factor, one liter atmosphere is 101.3 joules, and we get a negative 177 joules of work being done. The negative means that the system is doing the work and it is losing the energy. Now, they could have asked kilojoules and that would be really simple. We could use the metric system, divide this by a thousand and it would be a negative 0 0.177 kilojoules. But what's important for you to understand here is the work is negative and that sign is important because it tells the direction of the work. The system is doing the work on the surroundings, not the surroundings compressing the system and doing work on it. So remember, when we're exchanging energy between system and surroundings, right? Exchange of heat energy, how do we do this? How do we talk about thermal energy transfer in the earlier videos? Q equals MCAT. So now when we're looking at all of the internal energy within a system, it's not just heat, we're looking at work, and we got to remember work equals negative P times delta V. And the sum of those two, right, between the system and the surroundings is just reconfirming that the energy basically uh, can be transferred from the system to the surroundings. And we can use these calculations to determine that. And the total energy within the system, the total internal energy, is basically Q heat plus work. Now, this problem, it's really wordy, and I just wanna show you how there's a lot of excess fluff, and it's a little bit more simple. So, the firing of a potato cannon provides a good example of heat and work associated with the current chemical reaction. A potato is stuffed into a long cylinder that is capped on one end, uh, one and an open at the other. Some kind of fuel is introduced under the potato at the captain, usually through a small hole and ignited. There's my reaction. 
The potato then shoots out of the cannon, sometimes flying hundreds of feet, and the cannon emits heat to the surroundings. That is describing the process. What we need for the calculation is this later portion. If the burning of the fuel performs 855 joules of work on the potato, the potato is the surroundings. The fuel is the reaction, it's the system, because this is a combustion reaction. So it performs 855 joules on the potato and produces 1,422 joules of heat. What is E? So that's what you're looking for. So remember, E equals Q plus W. So since work is done by the system on the surroundings, the work is negative. And since the system is also losing heat, releasing it, exiting exothermic to the surroundings, its Q is also negative. So you have to make sure that you put the signs to get that negative value, because this is showing that the system's losing energy overall. It's losing this much energy, why? Because it has to do work on the surroundings and it's losing heat. Now, this problem provided you the work value and the heat, but remember, we might have to find the heat using Q equals MCAT, and you might have to find the work using negative P delta V. But I just wanted to emphasize how now the sign is critical. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the examples. and. Thanks for tuning in.